Welcome back to the VTAS Live Studio. I'm Jack Maxwell. And with me now, another travel expert is Russell Hannon. And he's presenting 50 Ways to Cut Euro Travel Costs in the uh, Savvy Travel Theater. Now, Russell is the author of Stop Dreaming, Start Traveling, The Ultimate Guide to Traveling More and Spending Less. That sounds intriguing. Hi, Russell. What's happening? Hey, Jack. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for being with us. So I think that everybody who has ever traveled ever in the history of the world, mostly, would want to do it and save some money. How did you get into that part of it? And, of course, it's a great idea, of course, but, uh, you know, how do you learn about all the travel tips, the budget stuff, save money? Well, you know, I, ironically, uh, you might be surprised that, that uh, for years I felt I couldn't afford to travel and uh, was really felt deprived, largely because I bought travel as a commodity where I looked at the price, uh, where I saw it, and, and said to myself, either I can afford it or I can't, and really neglected to understand that there's so many options when traveling that really there is no going rate. In fact, the going rate is a myth. And my day job uh, was uh, to find ways to get better results in less time using less money. So I have a lean management designation. And I asked myself, there must be ways I could apply this to travel, to travel more and spend less by leveraging all the best travel websites with these things called the best price guarantees, price drop protection, loyalty programs, business travel, which I did a lot of. And, and so what, what, what I really did is find creative ways to leverage different tools and resources to save on a flight and accommodations and the cost of eating and roaming and spending money on every day of each and every trip. So really the difference First, between saving a little and saving a lot is a difference between using one or two little tips or tricks that you have with upwards of a dozen or more on any given trip. And, you know, I think it's fun to find ways to save money. Even if you can afford to travel five star, it just it's exciting to be innovative and creative and crafty and find ways to save money. And uh, and so even if you can afford to travel, uh, uh, you're better off to try to save a few dollars and keep that money in your pocket. Absolutely. Just like the Monty Python movie. No, you got to haggle. You can't offer me full price. Even, even if you have money, you want to save no matter what. So it's great to have an expert out there saying this is how to do it. Because even if you, uh, I think that's part of the experience is what I'm saying. When you go back and tell stories, you say you're in this great bazaar or, or this, the spice market in Istanbul and they wanted so much for saffron, but you talked them down. That's fun. That becomes part of the myth, the story. I'm excited just talking to you about that. I mean, yeah, we're in the same wavelength there. Fully agree. You know, when I went to Europe, I've been there a few times, including with Booze Traveler. And uh, for me, it was fun. The way we saved money or, or had stories to tell, there are so many places that, and we didn't know this at the time, they say, here, here's the evening drinks. They're free. Try this. Try that. It's champagne or it's the local thing or Aquavit or or moonshine they're making, or their version of it, or great wine, or port. I know you have that experience as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, there's a lot of hotels, uh, major chains all around the world that have free wine hour every evening. And some of the ones are a little close to home, Kimpton Hotels, for example. They've got a number of hotels all throughout Europe, and they still have the free wine hour every evening. And there is upwards of a half a dozen hotels, uh, hotel chains throughout Europe that have free wine hours. And uh, not only that, um, like I, I got into, my girlfriend got me into wine tastings, and I, I couldn't believe how many wineries I went to, these opulence places uh, uh, with, you know, hillside with great views. And all we'd spend basically was $5 to taste four different wines. And we'd have a hostess telling us about the wines. Uh, and we'd also chat and laugh together. So I started doing some research about uh, inexpensive wineries in Europe and found that there's actually search engines you can use to actually find uh, uh, wine tastings and even brewery tours. And you can search them and sort them and filter them by price. And you can do that either at Viator.com or TripAdvisor. And you can find in any area upwards of half a dozen wineries for less than $5 US. You get a tour and uh, uh, a wine tasting of one, uh, one flavor of wine. Just can't believe how many options there are inexpensively and how easy to find them when you know about that. I didn't know about any of that. And I've been around and I've been there drinking. Hold on, let me write that down. What little tips again? <laughs> Tell me where I can find them. That's great. Now, you said when you started out, like most of us, as, as young people, we want to travel, but a lot of us can't afford to do so. How did you manage to travel 
And then how did you figure, well, this would be a good thing to do professionally to travel and to teach people how to save money? Yeah, well, well, well. The key thing is, is, is I, I felt I had a unique message to share in terms of how I leverage my professional background in terms of using lean principles to travel more and spend less by leveraging different uh, resources and websites. For, ex for example, uh, when we look at Europe, uh, there's a, a great list that I saw. And you'll see that if you watch my talk, or if you may have seen it already. Uh, uh, there's a great list of uh, someone I know. He, he, he found the cheapest five-star resorts in 104 major cities around the world. The highest European city is uh, Sofia in Bulgaria, where you can see a five-star resort for $70 a night. Now, in this list, he doesn't show all the, the exact hotel names. So what you do is you go to Priceline and you just search five-star hotels in Sofia, and they pop right up. And actually, I did that. Uh, just the other day and put a screenshot uh, in that talk. So it's leveraging a compass, tools that give you direction, and then using precision tools, like in that case, Priceline, to find phenomenal deals in luxury accommodations, which you would only find by leveraging different tools together. So that's how I think, and that's what I find is unique when I talk to people, is showing them uh, quick and easy ways that they can do that and replicate those, those methods to find the best and least expensive options for you. I know your, your buddy told you about Sofia, Bulgaria. What about you? Tell us about a trip you went or you took to Europe and you saved a bunch of money and you thought, this is great. I'm robbing them. <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. Uh, well, you know what? Europe, uh, uh, there's three that come to mind. Certainly can't talk about all of them, but there, there's a common thread with all the trips that I've done to Europe. One of them, uh, in, uh, three weeks in uh, Bavaria. So going through uh, Austria and Germany and the common thread is I, I time all my trips to either stay with people that I know uh, who are there or so that I can stay in places that would otherwise be empty. So in the summer, I'll find university rooms. You can stay in university dorms at the University of London for about 50 pounds a night in the southeast central district of uh uh, of London. Uh, if I'm going in the fall uh, to get close to Monaco, uh, I went in October and stayed in a bed and breakfast. That, that there was basically it was low season, no one there. And as opposed to staying in the expensive places like Monaco, I stayed in between Nice and Monaco, a small town called Boulieu sur Mer. So off the off the beaten path, most tourists will go straight to one or the other. But you find these nice spots in between, and, and rail is so great there. Uh, I recommend usually staying on the outskirts of places. Close to the train so they can get it in and out of spots. But beyond that, my rule of thumb has always been to fly to, to and back from Europe on points, and there's different ways that you can accumulate points to do that quite easily. Uh, I've also got a cheap cell phone. Every time I go to Europe, I bring the same one and I just buy a SIM card. But, but there's so many phone plans now and free Wi-Fi that, that you can access just about anywhere. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's increasingly easy to get by without paying, uh, paying roaming charges. And, I, and just as a rule, I avoid a few things I avoid. I avoid flying through the UK unless it's my destination because they've got higher taxes, passenger charges in the UK. And you'll also have to go through customs twice if you fly through Heathrow on your way to uh, anywhere else in Europe. You'll have to do customs twice, so you want to avoid that. I also avoid taxis as a rule of thumb. Uh, Europe, what's great, you've got rail that connects to a lot, a lot of airports, and you just go to the website of any uh, airport, and on the homepage, there'll be a transportation button showing rail and everything that connects to the airport. we got about a minute left, so can you tell us, if we wanted to go somewhere, and I know it changes all the time based on economics and world conditions, if someone wanted to go that, to see a great place, have, have a great meal, cheap drinks. Uh, what is the best bang for buck city that you know of right now around the world? Bang for buck, well, lower, if we're talking about Europe, I would go to East Europe, uh, uh, the uh, Croatia instead of Greece, for example, because it's similar to what you would get in Greece, but much less expensive. If you like the mountains, I'd say Slovenia. If you like beer, the Czech Republic. So leverage currency is one thing to do, but you can go to the world's most expensive cities and, and not spend much more than you would on a weekend uh, uh, close to home. Five-star hostels is something I'd propose in Europe. So every major city, there's a website where you can look at the nicest, poshest, cleanest, swankiest hostel uh, at hostelgeeks.com. There's a button that says five-star hostels, and you're going to pay less than half than you would at hotels. That's great, Russell Hannon. Thank you so much for all those tips. And maybe we'll take a trip sometime, have a couple of cocktails, all right? Great to be here. Enjoy the travel show. Thanks, buddy. You can see Russell present 50 ways to cut your old 
uh, Euro travel costs anytime in the uh, Savvy Travel Theater, by the way. The reason I screwed that up, I was trying to think of 50 ways to leave your love. It reminds me of that song. Just hop off the bus, Russ. Is that what you do? You're making new plans, Dad? All right. 